So we're going to go ahead and you're going to get a nice, uh, good quality 30 caliber bore brush. Um, and before you start, before you start, you want to just slide the uh, bore guide over your rod. Thread that on there. Give yourself a little bit of, uh, just a little bit of solvent. Okay, now stick the brushes in just as they go into the bore, or the, the muzzle. Slide the uh, bore guide, or the cleaning rod guide on, and just, I probably give it about 10 passes. Okay, so with that, now you go ahead and uh, pull it out, and we'll go ahead and clean off the rod. One of the other tricks that I like to do is uh, if you're using a very aggressive um, solvent, right, with ammonia. Um, these bristles are going to get eaten up really quickly, so I usually I usually just get a, a, a spray bottle of uh, denatured alcohol, and I go ahead and I clean off the solvent from the brush, and that preserves the life of your brush. Um, and just let it air dry. The the alcohol dries really really quickly. Okay. Okay. So at this point, you're going to give the rifle about 15 uh, 15 minutes, if uh, if you're using an aggressive bore solvent. If not, you can leave it in there as long as you want to. If it's good old Hoppy's Nine powder solvent or something like that. But like I said, if it's Sweet Seven Six Two or something with ammonia in it, uh, you don't want to leave it in the bore too long, or else you're going to start chewing away your metal. Okay. Um, again, and now what you want to do? Um, go ahead and. We're going to get your jag, uh, your your cleaning rod with jag on it. And uh, again, I like to use these uh, 22 caliber uh, cleaning patches with the jag. And now we're going to get that uh, that last bit of solvent um, out of your bore now that it's been sitting there for a while. And just keep on running the patches until they come through real, real nice and clean. Never run a dirty patch back through the bore. Here's the last patch that we ran through. It's come out real, real clean. So again, um, now what we're going to do is we're going to dry out the chamber. Okay. Oh, and one last thing. What I would like to show you is why you need this cleaning port. Now, if you have the bolt locked all the way back and you choose not to use um, something to, to basically uh, keep the bolt open, what you run the risk of is as if you had uh, a cleaning brush in here or if you had a jag in here, all it takes is just a very gentle tap um, on the back of that bolt, on the face of that bolt, okay, to basically let it loose. And what it will do is it will launch that cleaning rod clear across the room. Your brushes will be bent, um, or your jag will be broken, and your rod will also be bent too. Ask me how I know, okay? Uh, but this is just a 
these are just things that uh, that people have found out the hard way. Um, if you really need to, just get a magazine, an empty magazine, and that you can push on your bolt to your heart's content, and it won't it won't slam forward. So if you need to use a magazine as a bolt stop, go ahead and do that. Okay, so now we're going to uh, now we're going to clean out our chamber. Um, this is where again where I like to use a chambermaid with a, a bore mop. This is a 45 caliber bore mop uh, from uh, from Gunslick. I just cracked it out of there and I already cleaned the chamber, but again I forgot to uh, record start <laughs> recording on the camera as I was talking. So anyway, so what we're going to do is we're just going to shove that chambermaid right in there. And we're going to give it a few turns, okay, and just work it back and forth. And that chamber mop is going to do a real good job of getting all your chemicals out of there, okay? So, um, and then from then on, what I like to do is I just, I get some more alcohol, and I just, you know, give it a good squirt down, shake it off, throw it in the washer, whatever you got to do, and you'll be good to go. It'll be good for the next usage, okay? Now, if you only have the good old ratcheting chamber brush, what you do is uh, just get a, a 30 caliber cleaning patch um, and basically you wrap it around the brush, shove it in there and use the ratcheting action and that will clean your chamber. That'll get it nice and dry. Okay. And there you go. So that's how you can do it with both ways. Um, again, I prefer using the chamber mop, or the, the chamber made with the chamber mop. Okay. And again, then what you want to do is get the excess, all the excess stuff with a Q-tip. Okay. Wipe off whatever brass shavings might be around here. Um, clean off. Clean the old grease off of your uh, the bolt lug tracks. Okay, just give it a quick, uh, just give it a quick little wipe there. Get the, the the nasty stuff off, all the brass shavings, and the carbon. Okay, that's what you want to do there. Um, now at this point, go ahead and run a couple of more dry patches, but also you want to make sure your flash suppressor is dry as well. And what I like to do also is I like to once this once you've uh, taken this out. Clean it off real good, okay? Make sure you've got all the excess uh, dirty stuff off of there. And go ahead and throw it back in here um, as you get ready to run your last couple of bits of, uh, of cleaning patches through. What you also want to do is uh, run a Q-tip through this flash suppressor because it's going to trap all kinds of carbon. And when we scrubbed out the flash suppressor with a 9mm bore brush, um, it's going to have all kinds of junk in it that you want to get out. And that can be a little misleading too. You say, oh, okay, you know, my, my bore is still dirty. Well, no, it's not dirty. It's just that you're picking up carbon on the flash suppressor as you're shoving it in there. So you want to go ahead and, and make sure that that's nice and clean and dry before you start running your final patches through. And some people may say this is over cleaning. Again, that's their opinion. There you go. There's my patch that I just pulled through. Uh, very, very clean. Very dry. Okay. Once you're done there, um, I suggest getting a clean patch, putting just a little bit of CLP on there or something. Okay. Just get a little bit wet there and run one. Um, not soaking wet, but one damp patch through the bore, and what that'll do is that'll keep it uh, preserved between range trips, especially if you don't go shooting that often. And there you go. Okay. Now, another bit of caution is uh, if you're using a brass jag, like I am, right? 
you want to be sure if you're using the the really harsh stuff uh, with ammonia in it with ammonia in it once the ammonia breaks the copper down you'll have this bluish liquid that comes off or this bluish uh, um, residue now keep in mind that the bra or that the jag is made of brass and brass is a copper alloy so as the solvent sits on the jag it's going to con continue to eat it so um, so not be misleading if you keep running this thing through and it keeps coming out blue it's probably because you still have solvent stuck in the grooves of your jag and so it might be wise to just go ahead and give it a good spray you know with some uh, some alcohol and dry it off okay and uh, again just go through the uh, the routine of drying off whatever solvent spots and we're, you're pretty much just about done now that we ran some CLP through there um, we're a little wet in here as well so just do uh, just a couple more q-tips uh, get that kind of dried off a little bit too you know and as far as the barrel being clean that's it it's all done so I'm also going to talk about the Otis cleaning system. Um, if you can't, if you're going to be in the field or camping or hunting or something, and you want to take your guns with you and you don't want to lug all this stuff around, um, the Otis cleaning kit, I like it. I really, really do. Um, I think it's a happy medium. It's better than a boar snake. I highly discourage boar snakes for at least as a as as being considered a thorough method to clean an M14 because it's anything but that. Um, it's basically once you pull it through the first time it's now a dirty rope and uh, you can try to wash it as much as you can but you're gonna get contaminants on it and it's gonna be very hard to get them out and again it's not it doesn't uh, give you the benefits of having a jag a jag really does go through and uh, kind of forms itself around the, the, the grooves in a really really tight manner of the rifling <clears throat> and it really really cleans in there really good um, but if you don't uh, have the the means to use a jag I recommend using the, um, the Otis because of the fact that it is a plastic coated cable um, once you pass it through and it gets dirty you wipe it off and it's clean again you put on a new clean patch and you run it through and the one thing you never want to do is you never want to run a dirty patch back through the bore you're basically just shoving all this stuff right back in now with an Otis you have the benefit of being able to clean from the chamber to the muzzle and some people find that favorable other people don't think it's necessary People have been cleaning M14s from muzzle to chamber for years, and they've been doing really, really well. Um, people clean their ARs from chamber to muzzle. It really is a six one way, half dozen the other. Ask 20 different people, you're going to get 20 different um, different answers and 20 different opinions. And uh, in the end, it's up to you to make up your decision on what you decide to uh, to use to clean your rifle and what direction. Okay. Um, and again, so it's it's pretty easy. You're just going to, you know. Um, you know, with an Otis, you don't have to worry about damaging your cleaning rod because it's very, very flexible. So you can lock your bolt to the rear. You know, uh, you'll be able to, uh, you know, get your bore brush and just you can thread it on there, drop it in the chamber, okay, pull it out the other end, and you're good to go. So um, Otis cleaning system, cleaning system, good to go. Okay. Um, the the downside is that you're stuck with uh, you're stuck with eyelets. Okay, you can't use a jag. The eyelets aren't going to clean as good as the jags, but they're going to do a pretty good job. I would say um, necessary. I mean, um, sufficient to clean whatever you need to in 95% of the situations. Okay, and again, boar snakes, forget them. Don't like them at all. All right. So with that. Um, I think I've covered about everything as far as cleaning the bore. Um, the one thing you want to do if you shut off your gas system, um, you want to go ahead and turn that gas system back on. And there you go. Now your rifle's basically ready to go again.